Hi everyone, this talk is going to be about subquadratic snarks in the random oracle model. My name is Ilon Yugev and this is joint work with Alessandro Chiesa. Okay, so let me start by a brief introduction, okay, a very high level introduction to snarks. So these are succinct non-interactive arguments. So this is a proof system for some language L and we have a verifier that wants to be convinced that X is in the language and it's a non-interactive protocol so the approval sends a single message pi uh, the communication complexity okay meaning the size of this proof is going to be succinct so it's going to be very small in particular for an NP language this is like much smaller than the, uh, the witness itself and the soundness is computational what do we mean by computational okay so this is in the random oracle model so the prover and verifier both have uh, this shared resource this truly random function that outputs lambda lambda bits and the security requirement is called this uh, t epsilon security so for any t query unbounded so computationally unbounded cheating prover p the probability that this prover performs at most t queries and outputs a proof pi that makes the verifier accept is at most epsilon. Okay, so t is the bound of the number of queries the cheating prover is allowed to do and epsilon is a bound on its success probability. So why do we study security of snarks in the random oracle model? Well, it's a very elegant information theoretic model Okay, the questions are more about information and not uh, computational or complexity assumptions. Um, it's not only just a nice model, we actually, a, a nice model, we actually have uh, very elegant and nice constructions in, the, in this model. Uh, after you take these constructions in the run worker model, you can actually heuristically instantiate them uh, using usually relatively lightweight crypto or symmetric crypto. Okay, and then these uh, constructions are also post-quantum secure and also do not require any setup. Okay. So what constructions of snugs do we have? We have several constructions. I'm just gonna mention the main two. This is Mikali and BCS. They both work in the same uh, format or paradigm. So they both take an information theoretic proof it's either a PCP for Mikali or an IOP for BCS. Uh, then you combine this, combine this with a cryptographic uh, commitment. Uh, so this is just gonna be a Merkle tree, okay, using the random oracle. Uh, and you get a snark, okay? You get a very short, non-interactive succinct proof. Uh, slightly more detail just for Mikali's uh, constructions. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, use this later. Uh, so the prover writes uh, a PCP, okay, for the statement that X is in the language. He takes this PCP, computes a miracle tree, okay, he gets the root. He applies the random oracle on the root to uh, derive PCP randomness, okay, randomness for the verifier. Okay, this defines the queries the verifier wants to read. And then the proof is gonna contain this root, okay, all the PCP answers, okay, all the locations the verifier wanted to see, and all the authentication passes, okay? So all the authentication passes, making sure that uh, these answers are actually what he committed to uh, under this root. Okay, so this is gonna be the prover, and the verifier is, of course, gonna check the answers to the PCP, Okay, and then for each answer, he checks that uh, uh, the authentication path that corresponds to this answer. Okay, and what question, one question is, what is the size of the snug, okay, in this construction? Okay, so what is the size of pi? And uh, let me give like a, a one slide uh, answer of what the size is and what our contributions are. So Mikali's construction has a quadratic argument size and I'm gonna explain exactly what this means. And we give a slightly sub-quadratic argument size and this is really the first time, um, the first improvement to Mikali's constructions in a long time. 
Okay, so now let me explain these two issues uh, with slightly more detail. So Michali's argument size. Um, so the argument size depends on the PCP that you use. Okay, so suppose the PCP has length L, okay, so this is like the proof length over an alphabet sigma and it has Q queries, okay? Then the size is gonna be, so this is exactly the, the answers to the PCP. So you have Q queries and, 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 and this is one symbol, okay? And then you need all the authentication passes. So for every, uh, for, for every query, you have a path of length log n and every node in the tree is of size lambda, okay? This is the size of the, of the random work. Okay, so there's the information theoretic uh, cost and this is the cryptographic commitment cost. Uh, so I claim that if you wanna get T epsilon security, okay, you must set the random oracle to be uh, O of log T over epsilon and the number of queries of the PCP also needs to be log T over epsilon, okay, roughly. This means that the argument size is quadratic. What do I mean by quadratic? If you plug in these two parameters here, okay, you get ignoring like small log terms, okay, you get log t over epsilon squared, okay, because this is log t over epsilon and this lambda is log, log t over epsilon. Okay, I wanna briefly tell you why, uh, why these two must hold, okay. So first about the, the random oracle output size, okay? So um, here's one attack, okay? An adversary can just guess the root in advance, okay? And then he can derive a fooling PCP for this particular root, okay? If he knows the root, then he knows the queries of the PCP, and then if he knows the queries of the PCP in advance, of course he can, he can fool you, okay? But guessing in advance the, the root, that has like a very small probability, it's two to the minus lambda, okay? This is just the size of the root. Okay. And then he can try this t times, actually. So his success probability is roughly t times two to the minus lambda, okay? And if we want this to be smaller than epsilon, okay, it just means that the output of the random oracle must be log t over epsilon. Okay, what about q, the number of queries? Okay, so again, I claim that to get t epsilon security, the number of queries must be roughly log t over epsilon. Okay, and why is this? So first, the soundness of the PCP must be epsilon over t, okay, because he can try t times to win this probability and each time he has uh, a, a probability of winning. So you have to put the soundness of the PCP to be epsilon over t. Now, how do we achieve a PCP with such, uh, small, such small soundness? Well, you take the best PCP you can, you know, and uh, use it as a base PCP and, and you repeat, okay? And you repeat and decrease the error, you amplify the, the soundness. And uh, if you look at the standard PCP that has like constant soundness, constant queries, or even very sophisticated constructions like DHK, which has have very good soundness with relatively a small number of queries, or even if you go to the conjecture, the best possible PCP that we assume exists, so this is like the sliding scale conjecture, which has soundness one over poly and O of one queries, Okay, still the number of repetitions you need to do is log t over epsilon over some small factor that I'm currently ignoring. Uh, and, and so the final number of queries is still log t over epsilon. Okay, and this like we have lower bounds, like you really cannot do, do anything better. Okay, so let's just put things on a scale. Uh, so we said that Michali's construction is roughly log t over epsilon squared, okay? You can easily show a, a lower bound of log t over epsilon, okay? Like this is a trivial lower bound, you cannot do better than that. And of course, the question and the focus of this talk is what happens here in the middle? Okay, and now using all this formulation, I can formally state a result. So we prove, okay, we give a new construction. Uh, so we prove that there exists a snogs in the random oracle model 
that achieve argument size log t over epsilon times log t. Okay, so we don't have the log t over epsilon squared. Okay, but just one times this and then log t. Okay, for t epsilon security. And just one line about uh, our approach, okay, before I uh, describe the construction, we use a, a stronger information theoretic proof, okay? So we still use a PCP, but uh, a stronger soundness uh, notion. This allows us to combine this with a weak cryptographic commitment, okay? So it's not actually gonna be a, a commitment, but some weak binding. Uh, and together we get our uh, subquadratic snogs. Okay. So just putting this back on the scale, okay, in this work we show, we get this argument size, uh, well, it's, so it's much closer <laughs> to, to Michalis and still we have like a large gap here where um, we don't know. Um, of course, we hope that maybe after, uh, you know, our uh, first step, maybe we could actually make this uh, smaller and smaller and get to, to this uh, low bound. Okay. Um, one last comment about the construction before we, I describe it. So we actually work hard to get not only this uh, theoretical, uh, like uh, big O uh, tilde notation uh, expressions, but actually we get good concrete parameters and uh, we compare this with like a Mikali with like a, a standard based PCP. Uh, and you can see that uh, in this table, depending of course on the values of T and Epsilon, like we get different improvements and just like the best improvements is here in the table where we actually get like a, a factor of two better than Mikali. Okay, our construction. Um, so I only have time to describe the construction. I won't have time to give you a, a proof, um, but uh, I, I'll, I'll give the, the intuition of why this is uh, secure on the way. Okay, so our starting point is Mikali's construction. Okay, like think of Mikali, like you take a PCP, you do this Merkel root, uh, and then you give all the authentication passes. This is our starting point. What we are gonna do is we're gonna set the Oracle output sides to be log t, okay? So um, first, once we set it to be log t, actually we exactly get the, uh, the argument size that we want, okay? Because it's gonna be q, which is log t over epsilon times log t, okay? So the argument size is, is right, but <laughs> I just convinced you that you shouldn't use this, this uh, output size of under Oracle. Um, Okay, but now, okay, so just using this, the construction is not secure, of course. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna introduce a few changes that together are gonna make sure that the construction is secure. So we make four main changes, okay? We chop the tree, we introduce domain separation, we permute the proof, and we use robust PCPs, okay? And I'm gonna shortly describe these. Uh, and I just wanna say that these changes, they do not increase the, the argument size, okay? So we left it with the argument size that we want. Each and every one separately doesn't do a lot, but combined they actually do increase security, okay? And this is what lets us reduce the output size of the random oracle to just log t, okay? And just a comment, this also works when you add salts, uh, which is very good for, uh, for zero knowledge, okay? But I'm not gonna talk about zero knowledge uh, here. Okay, so this is Mikali, right? You take the PCP, you do a Merkle tree, you derive randomness, and then you give all the authentication passes. Uh, so we're gonna change this, uh, this commitment, okay? So instead of sending the root, we're gonna chop the tree at some layer I star, okay? So what do I mean? It's that you choose some layer I star, okay? Which I'm gonna choose, okay, soon. And uh, you stop computing the Merkle tree at this layer. Okay, and then you take all the nodes in this layer, we might have many nodes in this layer, you treat them as one like s long concatenated string, okay, and this is like your new root. So you apply the random oracle to all of this to, to derive PCP randomness. Okay, so this is just a chopped tree. Um, okay, so when I star equals zero, this is Mikali. Okay, I didn't do anything. When I star equals log n, log l, 
Okay, so this means that you just, <laughs> you chop here, meaning you just send the entire PCP. Okay, so this means that you have excellent security, okay, <laughs> but your proof length is like very, very large. Okay, and in general, uh, as I star is larger, the security is better, is higher, okay, uh, but the argument size is also larger. Okay, and the question is what, what is the best point? And in general, this trade off is not in your favor. Okay, except for one specific uh, value of I star, and this is going to be log Q. Okay, where again, Q is the number of queries uh, in the PCP. And uh, for this specific setting, we actually can show that we get better security, and we get the same argument size. Okay, and why do we get the same argument size? This is because anyway, you're going to open Q paths. Okay. So if you look at level log Q that has Q nodes in it, anyway the proof is going to contain with high probability almost all of these nodes. Okay, so sending all of the nodes really doesn't increase the, the actual proof size. And just some comment on why uh, this helps. So if you remember the attack that I described before where you guess the rules in advance and then you know the entire randomness, uh, okay, and, and this lets you win. This, this, is, this was one lower bound that uh, made us set the, the random oracle to log t over epsilon. Here, you cannot guess all of this uh, cap at once, okay? You can guess maybe a single node, okay? And then if you do that, you can only control uh, a small part of the PCP, okay? Which hopefully doesn't increase your probability by too much. Okay, the second change is a very simple change, okay, we call it domain separation. Uh, so we're going to use a different oracle for every location in the tree, okay? And because this is a random oracle, this is easily achieved just by, you know, putting a prefix for every query location ij. So if I have some node in level i of the tree, you know, it's the jth node in that level, I just put this prefix there, okay? And this prevents reusing uh, inversion or collisions in different parts of the trees. So if I, the adversary found some collision, okay, on one node in the tree, he cannot use this collision in a, in a different uh, node because he, he's going to need to use different uh, prefixes. This, of course, does not uh, increase the, uh, the size of the, uh, uh, of the proof because these i and j's, you don't need to write them explicitly. Okay. Um, so just an example, the prefix of this node is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, up to 1, 16 in this example, 2, 1, 2, 2, okay? So you just add the prefixes everywhere, and this really uh, splits the oracle to be different for every uh, position in the tree. Okay, change number three, um, permuting the proof. So we're going to permute the PCP proof before applying the chopped Merkle tree. Okay, when I mean permute the PCP, we're gonna permute the locations of the proof, okay? So for simplicity, we're just gonna assume access to a random permutation, okay, over L over the positions one to L, okay? L is the size of the PCP. This is just simplifying assumption for now, okay? Of course, you can implement this permutation like uh, using a uh, rakov okay, from a random oracle. I'm not gonna go into those details. Um, and the reason this creates the effect as, as if you had a PCP with uniform random queries. So if you have a PCP with uniform random queries to begin with, then, then that's great and you don't need this permutation, okay? But in general, you might have a PCP that has like, you know, uh, the distribution of queries is not uniform and I want every single query to be like to a uniform position, so I just <laughs> permute the positions of the, of the proof. Okay, so the position is important because the way the Merkle tree is constructed, is constructed, okay? If it's just a PCP, like the positions really mean nothing. Um, okay, so it's the same construction. We have the cap, we have the prefixes, and now instead of uh, writing the PCT, PCP itself, I'm permuting the PCP randomly, okay, and then, uh, and then writing this. So this might be position number 10, this might be position number 2, position number 25, and so on. Okay, 
Uh, but in every subtree, we're going to have like a, a random subset of the, of the PCP. Um, okay, change number four, uh, a robust PCP. So as we said, we're going to use something stronger than the standard uh, soundness notion of, of PCPs. Okay, so it's a strong notion of PCP. We call permuted robust PCPs. This has to do with how we permute the proof. And the intuition of robust PCPs in general, like robust PCP is not a new notion, is that uh, if the prover changes just a small number of symbols after the fact, okay, after the verifier already decided on what symbols to read, okay, so the prover commits to some proof, the verifier randomly chooses which symbols to read, and then after that you allow the prover to change a few symbols, still he cannot make the verifier accept, okay? So the local view of the verifier is actually far from being accepting. Uh, and we'll, we'll want such a, such a notion. Uh, our notion uh, is going to introduce something called the blocks. So we're going to have a parameter B, which is the number of blocks. And we're going to assume we have a random permutation over L. Okay. And then we're going to define distance. Okay, so this is not going to be distance by a single uh, symbol locations, but actually a blockwise distance. So it's the blockwise distance um, after you permute the strings according to, to this perm. Okay, so <coughs> I take the two strings, I permute them, and then I look at the block, block difference. Okay, so for example, uh, he, the difference between these two strings is one. Why? So these two blocks, all these blocks are exactly the same. And then you have these two blocks where even though they have two different locations, it's just one block that is different. Okay? So the, the, the distance is, is one in this case. Uh, so what, given this definition of distance, uh, what is our notion of, of, of PCP? Um, so uh, it, it's the following. Okay, so um, we have a parameter B and a distance D. And then we first publish a random permutation. Okay, so it's a truly random permutation, but it's known to everybody, known to the prover beforehand. Okay, the cheating prover P outputs a P PCP string. Okay, so he commits to some PCP string, pi. Okay, the verifier samples PCP randomness rho. He gives this to the prover, okay? So it gives the randomness back to the prover. And now the prover is actually allowed to output a different PCP string, okay? As a function of the randomness rho, okay? So a different PCP string pi, but, okay, the game is gonna output one, okay? So it's gonna win if and only if. Not only, of course, the verifier accepted the new string, the new proof, this is like easy, okay? But the new string should be close to the original proof. Okay, so the, the, the distance between the two is at most D. Okay, and this distance relative to, to this uh, block parameter B and, and this random permutation. So this is the, the, our like permuted robust PCP. Okay, well, just a standard robust PCP would be without this permutation at all. Okay, and then the B would be one. Okay. And uh, we're going to say that the PCP has robustness ratio beta if for any D, the ratio between, between these two things is uh, bounded by beta. Okay, so um, if you increase the distance by one and you look at the distance with D, okay, so this ratio is bounded by, by beta. Of course, you increase the probability of the verifier, but you can bound the ratio, okay? So then we say it has a robustness ratio beta. And um, um, so we're going to use such a, a PCP. We, we also construct this PCP. Okay, and this is like the fourth change uh, in the proof, okay, uh, compared to Mikali that can just use any PCP. And so this is the final construction. We have the chopped tree. Okay, we have the domain separation. Uh, we permute the proof. Okay, and we use, uh, we use this robust PCP. 
Okay, so this is a, a permuted proof of a, of a robust PCP. Okay. And I don't have time to show the, the proof. I'm just going to say the security is shown in two steps. Um, so first we show that permitted robust PCPs plus this weak commitment, okay? So it's a chop tree plus domain separation plus the permutation, okay? You actually get some quadratic snogs. And then the second step is, of course, constructing permitted robust PCPs, okay? So we show that these PCPs exist with good pa parameters um, just by showing that uh, a repeated PCP actually can, uh, uh, so you can take any like base PCP, repeat it, and this construction actually has, has the, the soundness notion that we want. Okay, so just a summary, we have shown a snog of size log t over epsilon times log t in the random oracle model uh, the lower bound is this, and just the major open question here, and uh, like you know, like wishful thinking, you know, I hope the answer is yes. Are there snogs in the random oracle model of size O of log T over epsilon? Okay, that of course would be like an amazing improvement, and I guess also like uh, have many practical uh, considerations. Okay, thank you guys uh, very much. Bye.